<laughs> hey people, it's Broken Puppet and this is how to draw a neo-traditional owl face. Enjoy. Right people, how to draw a neo-traditional owl. Now this one's going to be like just like the front face, so it's all the facial details. You know, I'll do another one where you've got like four wingspan, but I want to do one just dedicated to getting the face right. Start with, get yourself a circle. Come out a bit wider and just curve down off the edges. Just to get your basic shape in there. Bring the curve now. It's going to be looking slightly at an angle, so his face is going to be kind of like looking that kind of way slightly. So I want to bring this curve, and I want this curve to dip at this center point here, and then come out of this side. So it's not a perfect circle coming through the middle. It's kind of slightly at an angle. Don't worry about too much in a minute. Just plotting in basic shapes. Get yourself a diamond shape coming off of this. Like so. So a circle on this side. Now you want the circle overlapping this line. A circle this side. Try to get them, you know, slightly even. This one may be a tiny bit smaller if you want. But you're generally looking for out the sort of same. Now bring in a circle shape, it comes slightly wider as it goes further out. So you see here, it's thinner, and then it goes wider as it gets there. Same kind of on this side, but a little bit smaller on this side, not quite as far. Bring the line around here, follow that circle. When you get to the center of the circle, I need to dip that line down. Okay, up. Curve around. Bring a little line just coming off of this shape, just widening up this line bit and slowly curve outward. So go up and out. Join it up. Bring that curve around there. Now, where you got this kind of V shape, I'm going to bring another slight V shape just coming in just underneath it, slightly wider. Like so. Do a little ball shape just here. One just there. I'm just going to bring in a curved line just coming off in between these two bits here. I'm going to cut this one off so when it comes to the bottom, I'm going to have a big V shape. I'm going to bring this down further at the center. Coming to the points, I'm going to have some oval shapes going up in between it. Very traditional new school pattern. You'll see that pattern a hell of a lot on the traditional stuff. You'll see when I do it. I might have a little bit of a curve just coming off the edge, just there and there, possibly. So the arching behind there. I'm going to have a circle just in the background, like a moon. I'm going to have some clouds coming around there just to shape it off. Underneath it, I'm just going to do like half oval shapes, just repeating, just looking at them in now. I'm not worried too much about the detail of them, it's just to build up and get like the view in your head of how it's going to go. So you can see the shape building up now. So now we've got that, I'm going to start refining. Let's start with this eyebrow part. So we're going to come from the bottom of this bit, go up, go outwards, like so. And bring this line down. So you're making like a long sort of tubular shape just here. Bring this out, curve this line up. So you're going from this bottom line, curving up to that top line sort of bit. You'll see why, you know, in a minute. Now underneath here, I'm going to have like oval shapes but coming to a point. 
at the edge. So it's going to come under and connect up with that line. Same on this side. Going to have a few here. Go slightly longer and wider as they go further out. Not too many. And then this top part here, just curve this off more solidly, like so. On top of this gap, I'm going to have this uh, sort of like dragon scale pattern. You've seen this done before, you know, it's very traditional, like, you know, Asian, old school, neo traditional. It's just repeated semicircles, and each time you take a semicircle from one, go to the center of the other, like so. And you keep doing that and just put it up layer by layer until you fill this top section with this pattern. Like so. So that's the top of his head done. And I'm going to come down to do his nose. So we're going to have this arch bit here. Now when we've done this circle here, you're going to have like a fur bit, it's going to kind of come over. You always see this on ours, so it's going to flick little lines, just curving across, coming up here, to the top. Just curving around that space there. And then this nose can come from behind it. I'm going to go, not going to go down this arm, I'm going to curve into it to that sort of center point. Curve up and out to that one and then curve that back now you're not going to quite see as much fur on this side so I'm going to kind of curve it the other way bring the eye bring the lines up to center so you know roughly where you're going to put your shading underneath it and bring this down and now when we get to this line I'm going to curve it inwards So bring that line down, kind of curve it to the bottom bit, and again just on this side, curve out, curve in, outwards. Now I'm going to create a little kind of loop bit just on the side here, so I'm going to come up from this top corner, just come out a little bit and curve into that line, same on this side. Just so you've got like a little overturn, so you've got the inside of the mouth, the outside of the mouth, so you can kind of see it. You'll see it more when I do it in the pen, I'm going to make it a bit more clearer. Then you've got the eyes. So reinforce that circle bit at the side. You want that nice and strong on a dark line around the outside. Nice big pupil on the inside. And put a highlight. I'm going to put this one at the top corner. Whichever side you choose to put the highlight, I recommend putting the same place on both eyes. You know, if you put a highlight here, put it there on that side. You know, don't sort of put a highlight here and then highlight there because it just won't make sense and it won't look right. Same with this one, so I'm just reinforcing the outside bit. When it comes here, I'm going to have a little just part just coming up the side there, just to sort of show how the eye goes. I might have a tin of it just on that side, but not as much, because you won't see it as much on that side. So again, get the pupil bit in there. And get that highlight just there. And now where we've done these two circular bits, just coming around the eyes. You can do the same kind of thing here, you can just do the rest of the repeated line pattern if you want. But when I saw it was pretty cool. Bring lines outwards, curving around it. And kind of just V in the sides, get a nice kind of pattern around the eye. Now I saw someone do that ages ago, I can't remember who, if I could remember I would credit the yeah, so not. it's not stealing, you know, it's, just, it's just a pattern, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. But, yeah. So you sort of just get a pattern around the outside. Of this bottom bit, I'm just going to curve in this line, just flicking this hair bit in. Same bit coming around there. And this bit I'm going to have a bit more bubbly, so I'm going to have the lines curving off. And a random size is curving around the edge. Just 
Kev, 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 kev. Or an edge. And then a bottom bit. Similar thing, I'm just going to do random size curves. Just building up this feather texture. Because you know, obviously the feather goes down and more the feathers show, so. And I do want to have the hint of that. I want to have a hint, just like a little hint of a shoulder bit. That's where the wings come out to the sides. Just reinforcing those clouds a bit. And that's basics when it comes to line work. So now I'm just going to grab my paint, paint in the detail. Now I'm going to use different line weights. So I'm just going to start with a thicker line. So you see there'll be certain lines I'll put in with a thick one and certain lines I won't. That I just use the uh, thinner liner for. The main bits I put in the uh, thicker lines on are the bits I want to really stand out. You know, like not the high detail parts, just the parts that want to be like solid. Just gonna black in those bit of pupil. Now that's how I stop where I get to the highlight. Make sure you don't go over that highlight. Side edge bit. Come around that. Grab me final liner. And then it's going to put in. This fur texture. So now you're just flicking in lines, but the same distance part, just curving as we go up. And I'm just a bit of the nose. Turn in that mouth. I think the key thing to change is like traditional from neo traditional is the pattern work. You know, the pattern work and the line whips. You know, old school, you know, is very much pattern work oriented, but it sticks to a certain kinds of pattern. You know, there's the same sort of types. You know, if you vary too much from that, you'd kind of lose the old school look. As where neo traditional was very much open to pretty much new ideas and new patterns you know it's like old school just without the strings attached Okay. 
connect up any little bit of gaps you have. In this line rig and around it. Come out there. Little bits of land. Run around that highlight. Go up, go down, go up there. So you can see it's slowly coming together now. So I said this bit just all random sizes curving off. So you don't go too extreme, like you know, don't go sort of do like absolutely tiny sort of ones and then absolutely massive ones. You know, vary the size a little bit, but not too dramatic. When it's too dramatic, I think sometimes it just kind of feels that it's not been done properly. You know, it's like someone just literally just is doing random sort of shapes and sizes. Which is pretty much what you're doing anyway, but you don't. People look at it and instantly feel that straight off. Let's get this oval pattern in here. Take your time with this. I tend to go quite quick in my circles, and I know they're far from perfect. But I don't think anyone wants to see me sitting there for like an hour in circles. Or maybe you do. Let me know. But I can't promise I'll do it if you guys do want to see it. I'm not going to sit there for hours doing circles. Goes off the side. Bum 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 bum. Not be enough circle. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you can take little shortcuts when it's up a circle. If you want to get a perfect circle, get something circular. Preferably something that doesn't have tape around it, because as you can see, it can get in the way sometimes. There we go. Nah. 
Yeah, I think like these ones them. The clouds, I'm literally going to do semicircles, random sizes, just curving around, and around. Until it gets to the bottom bit. Just like so. I'm looking, I'm not going to put these bits in here now. I don't think it needs it. I was originally going to do like two swells there. But, uh, as you probably noticed when you do designs, things change as you do the design. Now, where did I put my rubber? Rub out our pencil work. And let's start shading and colouring. Cool, and start with and do this top part. I'm gonna bring in a black semicircle. Turn the same distance apart from the line and do us on each one of them. Gives a really cool effect once it's all done. You don't have to do this with black, you can do this with like brown or any colour you kind of really fancy. I've got my own quite prone to doing this like in like a purple, like a lilac colour. Which looks really good. This is just a pro marker, and this paper is just like scrap paper. So let's see why I brought it in this one. You know, you might not find it in an art section in the shop. Sometimes it's in the craft section. It's more for like sticking in photos and stuff, I think. But I just love the paper, you know. So like I always say, just because someone says you've got to use certain something for some specific reason, like they say like, oh, you know, using watercolours, you have to use watercolour paper. It's not true, you know, whatever paper works for you. You know, I've got a friend of mine now, you know, he loves doing like, you know, canvases and what he does, he just gets like old newspapers and stuff. Literally just sticks them all together and he uses that for his paper. So you see, it just gives it like a really cool effect. A little bit closer to that. And then I'm going to come in with my brush markers, as you've probably seen me do a million times. I start off flicking in some black in certain key areas. I mean, like corners where it sort of comes underneath sort of certain things. Just under this bit. A little bit just fading off into this pan here. I think it might be pretty cool. Now I usually recommend a side to side motion when shading. But with this when using like this brush marker, you know, my grey is very close to my black. So I can kind of flick it in and it'll blend out really quite nicely. But don't feel like I have to use brush markers, you know, you can use water paints, pencils, you know, it's all the same thing, you know, you just apply just apply a bit of you know common logic to it, you know. If you're using water paints, you know, just water down your colours to shade out. You know, if you use pencils, just tone it down, you know, and sort of like doing fade outs. The 
Just flicking this in between these little gaps just here. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape here. Sorry about that, my camera decided to stupidly turn itself off. What we've done is I flicked in my lighter grey and went over all those dark areas. Used like a darker grey and then a lighter grey. And just using a side to side motion, just blend it all out. In here, I just put a dark grey and I left a white highlight around each one of them. Like so. Uh, yeah, just sort of key areas like around the eyes, around here, here. And then what I've done is put orange in and I've left a little highlight just around the edge. And then what I'm going to do is fill this up with yellow so I get a cool colour blend. So rather than the eye just being orange, it's going to be like a cool orange into yellow. Now this yellow will go brighter as it dries. It always goes in a bit darker on this type of paper to begin with. And what I might do is just flick in a tiny, tiny little bit of brown, just come off the top. And just here to create a little bit of shadow just coming through it. Obviously where it comes underneath the eyelid. Put the brown in and then just work back over that with the orange. And just work over that again with the yellow. Blue. I think I'm blue for this bit. You know, don't sort of like feel you have to stick to certain kind of colours, you know, like, you know, like when you're thinking an owl, don't sort of think, oh, it has to be all browns and bird tones. You know, throw a random colour in there, you know, play around with it. You know, a lot of the best tattoos I've seen are just where people have just literally just messed about chucking colours in. So I'm just using pretty much all Winsor & Newton brush markers and some pro markers. A bit of register in the mouth. Start with a little bit of brown. Be sure to work over the uh, darker colours as well. Otherwise, when it dries, sometimes you get that sort of like transparency where you can clearly see where it doesn't connect. That's not what you want. Just in this more light brown. I say light brown, it's more of a flesh tone, but it's just going down the same colour spectrum. Purple comes out kind of greyish, which I kind of like. It's just got like a hint of colour. So I'm just going to run this through. That part just there. Thinking, I'm going to blend blue. Into... Yeah, I'm going to go brown, just a hint. Pretty strong, just through the centre. Going to light one, flicking into that blue. Very nice, cool colour transition. Yeah, I like that. Again, I'm going to play around my colours here. You know, you can just do it brown. 
I'm going to be crazy with this. I'm going to put brown. I'm going to have this going into red flicking from the bottom. Really sorry about this, people. I don't know why my camera is playing up. So, yeah, I flicked in the brown and I went in with a lighter brown just coming off blending this. I put a little bit of a light brown in just coming from the side bit here in here. So, you can see, you've got this cool little shines coming through the center. Here I just used this brown and I went over the whole thing. Because I left the white highlight edges, you can see you got the high the highlight. So the brown's gone darker over the dark grey, but stayed light on the brown bits. But uh yeah again, yeah, I'm really sorry about that people. I don't know why my camera keeps turning off. So I'm just gonna put some red. In between these little gaps. On both sides. Excuse me. I'm just going to cover these bits. Yeah, I think. I'm going to go yellow for the moon bit as well. Stay on because there's not much left. It's falling off of this one. Yeah, uh, they use a hell of a lot. And it's gonna come in with this purple that looks kind of greyish. That. 
I'm just going to put in a couple of white highlights, nothing too crazy. Let's get my white pencil. On white paper you won't notice it too much, but on this kind of paper it does. It just gives you a hint of where your highlights want to be. Look down the center of these. No, too crazy, just little flicks here and there, really. Just anyway, a bit kind of full circular, you can kind of edit. And then just going to put in some. Last final touch, just some little black dots. Just on some of the feathery bits. Just like so. Okay, that's how you do a near traditional owl face. I hope you like it. Check out my other videos, subscribe, comment, yada 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 get up. And a broken puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.